So right now I'm just analyzing another trade. All right, so we all we all understand the entry, right? Entry is obvious. Target was 64.51. So it doesn't quite hit that. So his entry was Yeah, and stop loss is 65.50. Mm, brutal. All right, Carlos, let me help you with that setup. So team, I love the entry. I don't love the stop loss. Because we have two situations. This is where everyone's stops are going to go on that trade. This is where the stop needs to go, either here, if you're a little bit more conservative, or at least here above the high of this candle. Because where that stop is right there, in my opinion, it's really just kind of basically placed. There's, I don't specifically see any real reason to place it there. I love the entry. My stop loss would have been above the high of that wick or it would have been about this uh, all, all-time high up here. Does that make sense, team? And then what we'll do is we're going to pop in and just analyze the actual trade and how it kind of played out. So I'm going to draw the short trade, stop loss above that wick. And again, would I have really been able to hold the entire time? I don't know. So if I'm in this trade and all these bear candles come in, I'm sure I lower my stop anyway to here or here and probably get stopped out. Most likely. So on this trade, and again, unless, of course, when I originally set the trade up, I just walk away for a long period of time, I, too, probably lose on this trade. And then in, I hope, let's imagine that we take this trade team and we get stopped out here, so we lose 0.7. The question that you would want to have is, would you have gotten back in on this candle or one of these candles here for a second trade? Because again, with Carlos's trade, and I'll review that for him in the 90-day class later tonight, if he loses or I lose on this trade and you lose 0.7, your number one goal is to get back into the trade and try to make more than you lose. So if you can short below this doji and specifically below the low of this bull candle, entry here, stop loss, you're still placing it above this candle. Do you guys see that? You're still placing your stop loss above there. You're entering below the low of that bull candle. Check out your 1.2, ladies and gentlemen. Great trade. Now, I get it that you might go, well, how do I, how do I get my brain to really do that in the heat of the moment? And the answer is you go back and you study this like your financial life depends on it. Study this chart and back trade it 10 times in a row. And do the same thing repetitively. This is the one thing that will separate real life traders from people who do whatever whenever they do it. Just people who consistently lose money. Almost no one that I've ever seen in my life as a trader will go in and trade the exact same setup 10 different times with the exact same process 10 different times. Entering here, stop loss here, bear candle, stop out, bull candle, entry, stop, 1.2. That's one. Bull candle, entry below, stop above, Bear candle closing below the 10, place your stop there, get stopped out, lose 0.6, bull candle closing below the 10, entry below, stop above, hit 1.2, get out. Bull candle, entry below, stop above, get triggered in, see a bear candle closing above the 10, lower the stop loss, get stopped out, bull candle, entry below, stop above, exit for a profit. Bull candle, entry below bull candle, stop above prior high, bear candle closing above the 10, stop goes above the high of that bear candle, get stopped out, see a bull candle, perfect bull candle, inside bull candle being nestled perfectly 
as a resistance on the 10 EMA, entry below, stop above, get filled, exit at 1.2, move on. Do you guys see what I'm doing here? I can do this all day. That's why we're here. I'm not even getting tired yet. I can do this all day. And so when you do it all day, when you can look at it and you can go, this is what I'm going to do all the time. When that trade shows up, guess what you're going to do? Now, this is a pretty funny story that one of my mentors, David Bach, taught me or told me um, from his TEDx talk. I'm going to see if I can tell you the same the, the joke the same way he told it. I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to mess it up. So in a training environment, I had a friend who was learning self-defense. And he was practicing having someone draw a gun on him, takes the gun out their hands, and points it back at them. And in this training, the exact process goes, you take the gun, you hold it, you point it at the person, and you give it back to them so you can repeat this over and over and over. Right? And you go through this process a hundred times in a day. Gun, boom, ba ba bang, get it back, ah, hand it over. Gun, boom, ah, ba 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 ba, take the gun, right, ah, give it back. And that training was extremely useful for my friend who, while he was in a foreign country, literally had a gun get drawn on him. Gun gets drawn, boom, ladies and gentlemen, what does he do? Bang, he acts, he knows exactly what to do. Ba 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 boom, takes the gun, bang, holds it. Gives it back. <laughs> Random little fun story. I have no idea if that's true or not. But the point is, the hilarity part of it is, he, he practiced the thing so much, he did the whole thing through the end of it, right? And that's what you want to do in your training is you want to get it to the point where it's so crystallized that you, you just don't worry about the fear. I was asked the other day, Jeremy, how do you control your emotions? I don't. I don't control my emotions. I, I get afraid on every single trade that I take. My brain on every single trade that I take is like, you're about to lose all your money. And I go, shut up, brain. And I just, I take the trade anyway. But I'm aware of my emotions. It's not that I control them. I say, hey, thanks for showing up, fear. I appreciate you. This is really cool. What a fun day. I don't want you in my world right now. If I'm aware of the emotion of something else, anxiety, uh, panic, got to use the bathroom, what, what other random frustrations that come in? Because life can put pressure on you and you can have external influences when that happens that'll just make you perform poorly. Right? So it's being aware of how you feel so that you can make that determination of what's going to happen. Is that fair? I'm not in control of my emotions. When I'm, when I'm at 60 miles in a race that I'm running, I'm not saying, oh, how amazing do I feel? This is great. I'm aware that everything is sucky. And I just make the change and make the distinct habit of going, I got to push through this anyway. I know it's there. I'm aware that it's there. I'm going to keep going.